Making a list and checking it twice, huh? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be looking at today. Read along with me word for word. Verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at and considering today. Read along with me. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Okay. Study. Study. To shew thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey Mark the messenger. Okay. You need to finish the verse son. Okay. Ken Helvin. You need to finish the verse son. Okay. All right. Read along with me because my mouth goes quicker than my brain sometimes. Making a list, huh? I'm checking it twice. Brethren, look at me. Watch out for these Christians. These King James Bible believing Christians. Who come out with these checklists unto salvation. Watch out for this. Okay. Now there will be, if I can remember, there will be quite a few videos in the description box where we go over this in greater detail than we will right now today. But in contact in our fellowship with several brethren, this is this is something that keeps coming up. And brethren, you need to be aware of this. Now, you got the scriptures? We're going to begin very simply with James chapter 2, verse 19. One of the favorite ones of the sleazy believers, which um, they, they do all these mental and spiritual gymnastics to get away from this, but they never really do. It's funny. <laughs> James 2, 19. Thou believest that there is one God, Christian, usually a Christian that you're going to meet, unfortunately, believes in one God and <laughs> three persons. I'm not going to get started on that. Okay? I hate the Trinity. Oh, that, that Trinity is not what God is, so go away. Okay? We ain't getting off on that. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Hmm. Now, put, let's put our thinking caps on here, brethren. Okay? Dear brother, are you aware? Think about this. Think about this. Are you aware that the devils, the devils, do believe every right, correct, and accurate doctrine? Think. Use your brain. Think. Are you going to convince yourself that a devil isn't aware that the scriptures are to be rightly divided? Do you think that a devil doesn't know or is unaware that God is actually one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You, do you think that? Hmm? Do you think that a devil is not aware of the scriptural truth that within the dispensation salvation changes? Hmm? Do you think a devil doesn't know that? Hmm? Do you think a devil doesn't believe and know that there is going to be a redemption of the purchased possession before the time of Jacob's trouble? Do, do, you, do you think the devil doesn't know that or doesn't even believe it? Hmm? Do you think a devil isn't aware and doesn't believe the fact? See, we're, I'm speaking about fact. These are facts, okay? You don't want to believe those atheists. You don't want to believe that uh, Christian. That's your problem. These are indisputable facts. Okay? All right? Do you think a devil 
doesn't believe that today in this dispensation if you come to the Lord on his terms that you're once saved always saved hmm? do you really think do you really think the devils don't believe the facts hmm? and you gotta remember Satan himself who is transformed into an angel of light. Do you realize, do you know that Satan himself has seen the face of God? See, one of the things that the devils will do will have you to believe that a devil doesn't know anything about truth. This is not, the, this is not right. This is not accurate. Because, see, in order to deceive, like most of these devils do, there has to be a certain knowledge of the factual truth of Scripture for them to go totally contrary from it. Brethren, you, you, dear brother, my, my dear brother overseas, my dear sweetheart brother, think about this. Do you really think that a devil doesn't believe the factual truth? Truth of Scripture. Hmm? Screw tape letters written by that devil uh, Catholic. Oh, uh, what is his name? Lewis. Um, whatever his name is, Lewis, Roman Catholic uh, Lewis, uh, who wrote the screw tape letters. Okay, guys lost and in hell with his buddy J.R.R. Tolkien. Okay, anyway, he wrote that thing called the screw tape letters and in the screw tape letters there was a part in that book where there are two devils talking to each other the elder and the younger and the elder says something to the younger it's like you know make people believe that the devil has uh, got the little horns and the pitchfork and the tail going out from between his legs that's the devil and no no you got to remember this thing about dev the devil and his Ministers of righteousness, okay? The, the, what Hollywood tells you what a devil is with the uh, speaking in Latin backwards and the stigmata and all the vomiting green pea soup and the, with the weird eyes, okay? That stuff is devilish, absolutely. But see, when you get now to the brass tacks of things, that is not what the devil himself and his ministers of righteousness are. They're religious. They're dignified. They speak smooth things. They prophesy deceits. You have to remember that. There ain't a devil out there, dear friend, who doesn't believe the factual truth of Scripture. Well, what's the difference? The difference is they don't accept it. That's the difference. And remember this thing about our enemies, dear brother. Remember this, okay? Remember that. I have known people who believe all the right, right scriptural doctrines, but they lost. Because you got to remember, God doesn't force you to accede onto the truth. He doesn't force you. We, I think that has been proven to you through Scripture and several videos. And if you want to deny that, you, you, you crazy. Go away. But see, Satan doesn't also, also does not hold a gun to your head. I tell you that all the time. Brethren, brethren, look at me, look at me, okay? The devils, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Don't you think for one second that a devil that's living in so-and-so or is controlling so-and-so, don't you think for a second that the devils do not believe the factual truth of Scripture and the accurate, correct, rightly divided doctrines for today. Don't you fall for that for one second. 
you are underestimating the enemy. Now you can, yes, you can overestimate our enemy. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Give you an example. Devil, the devil himself and his devils themselves cannot be in two places at once like our Lord can. Okay? He can't do that. Devils can't do that. The devil has an incredible network where communication is, okay? But the devil and devils cannot be in five places at the same time. Okay? It can't do that. Okay? All right? Brethren. And see, and uh, overestimating the devil and his angels is thinking that they can do things like that. But to underestimate is to say, well, devils don't know anything really about truth. Oh, <laughs> you know, John MacArthur, Jesuit James White, Peter Rockman, okay, brilliant men, brilliant men. Give him, give him, gotta give it where it's due, okay? Satan is far, uh, 500 times more brilliant than they are, all of them combined. Sit, you think. You think that the devil don't know this? Huh? You don't think that the devil don't know this from cover to cover? Look at Rome. Look at how they twist God's perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version. Brother, sister, wake up to this fact. Now, go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I want to demonstrate this to you. Because, and brethren, oh, and very quickly, very quickly, I, gotta, I have to acknowledge this, okay? There was a time, and you can see the videos here on this channel. There was a time when I taught, preached, and even believed that if someone could merely say, <clears throat> excuse me, I got to get this right. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. I used to believe, teach, preach that if someone could say that, that's proof that they're saved. No, it isn't. All that proves is that they could say it. And we have debunked that nonsense. And there will be links in the video, uh, links in the description box for you if you have questions about that. Okay? Even... Mark the messenger who can't, who can't uh, quote 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 all the way. Even he has fallen into the, well, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Even he's fallen into that. And that guy's lost. Okay? All right? Now, there is a way to discern and oh, by the way, what are you, a fruit discerner? Yes, we saints are. We are fruit discerners. We are. You know why? Because we examine ourselves first, and we got a perfect standard. Okay? Yes, we are fruit dis dis discerners. You imbecilic bloke, you. Ugh. Not going to get off on that. Okay? Well, of course, there is a way to discern whether someone is of us or not of us, okay? And there's a certain individual from Oregon, okay? You need to shut up. Who keeps, apparently, as I am informed, who also still watches what the Lord does here, okay? Is continually doing, are you a Bible believer in Christian? <laughs> Here you go. Here's some fuel for you devils. I'm not a Bible-believing Christian. Oh. You, do you realize, dude, that Jesuit James White referred to himself as a Bible-believing Christian? Jesuit James White. Yeah. Who's going for a look-alike contest with his master, Ignatius de Loyola. <laughs> Crazy. I am a saint. Oh, you guys, you guys, just quiet, quiet. I am a saint who believes the scriptures 
There's a big difference. But I have been informed that these guys who, and they're not just that one individual, but there are many that will come out with these videos giving you a checklist, which they can conveniently fulfill themselves, by the way. Okay? Um, saying if they do this, 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 then they're saved. You need to beware of these checklist Christians, brethren. You need to watch out for them. Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Okay? And when he, the Lord Jesus Christ, was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there met him two possessed with devils, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. So we got a guy here possessed with devils. Okay? Check this out. Check this out. If a uh, man's a saved, King James Bible-believing Christian, if he believes this, 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 this. Okay? And behold, they, the devils, cried out, saying, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? What time is that? What time is that? Well, at the great white throne of judgment, all sin, death, you know, the wages of sin is death, will be cast into the lake of fire, and then eternity will begin where there ain't no sin. Okay, we, we've talked about that. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Hmm. Who was saying that? Well, that'd be a devil. Oh, go to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 23 on to verse 26. What we're about to read is also echoed in Luke chapter 4. Okay? But, Mark chapter 1, verses 23 on to verse 26. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. I've run into people who's like, well, just because it's an unclean spirit doesn't mean that it's uh, a devil. <laughs> I'm up to that, yeah. Yeah, and the saints, you're, you're like, what? What? But see... When you got someone who is in love with themselves and are deceiving themselves and want to deceive you to defend themselves, to put on the facade that they can guide people to hell, you, you will try to justify anything. Yeah. Well, just because it's an unclean spirit. So what are you saying? That, number one, that's lowercase s, not a capital case s, capital case s, signifies the Lord himself, okay? Lowercase s is one that is imparted. We've talked about that, okay? So when someone says that, are they implying that the Spirit of the Lord, capital S, is unclean? See, sometimes you got to take a step back, brother, and be like, what in the name of Hades are you talking about? Okay? But look at this. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Look at that verse. There was in the synagogue. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. The law was still binding, okay? Under the law, it was faith and works, okay? Don't believe these twits who tell you that it was by grace through faith from beginning to end. That they're lying to you, okay? But where was this individual with an unclean spirit, i.e. devil, okay? Where was he at? Well, that'd be in the synagogue. A house of worship. Mm. So, just looking at that verse, so someone with an unclean spirit, <laughs> a devil, okay? Someone with an unclean spirit in a house of worship. Mm. Did you give your tithe in the plate yesterday, Christian? Hmm? 
Did you go there with the fellowship and clap your hands to the CCM, huh? And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Think the devils don't know the truth? You think the devils don't know what the accurate, correct, scriptural doctrine, especially for today, is? Come on, brother. Come on, sister. And look who's saying this. A man with an unclean spirit, i.e. a devil, saying that. Okay? And see, someone who wants to defend themselves, who is also a devil, will go to the unclean spirit. They'll strain it in that and swallow the camel, see? Okay? That is something. It's like when the Elmer from New York, you know, about Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 14. It's like, well, they don't deal with that. And they focus on the word believe in Romans 10, verse 14. And they don't read the entire context. <laughs> okay? That, that is a tactic of a devil, okay? Someone who wants to just as if by themselves, okay? You need to watch out for that. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Okay, like I said, that, what we just read, is also echoed in Luke chapter 4, verses 33 on verse 35, which we're not going to go to. You go ahead and go there yourself. And interesting, too, about Luke chapter 4, uh, you know, that's where Satan says to the Lord, all this will I give you. If, you know, you fall down worse than me, all will be thine. Okay? Isn't that interesting? Go to Luke chapter 8. Go to Luke chapter 8. Okay. Luke chapter 8. Verses 26 on to verse 32. And this, I believe, is also echoed in Mark chapter... Five. Yes, this is echoed in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 7. But right here, it's a little bit more descriptive, okay? And especially for what we're addressing. Luke chapter 8, verses 26 on to verse 32. <clears throat> Where are we? Okay. Hello, Brad. There we go. Okay, so beg your pardon. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. This right here is also a very good text, so you can distinguish and pinpoint devil possession. Okay. Unfortunately, my mother, my mother died devil possessed, and she exhibited some. Uh, my mother, uh, uh, what was it? My wife is uh, five foot four, five foot two, maybe I don't know. Uh, she, smaller woman. My mother died an emaciated woman. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Anyway, this text that we are looking at in Luke chapter 8 could be very useful for you if you believe someone you love is possessed with a devil. Verse 28. Now, here's a guy who's devil possessed. Okay? Devil possessed. Look at verse 28. And when he saw Jesus... He cried out and fell down before him. Oh, kind of like the charismatics who will do that spasmodic shaking and blah, 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 and then they'll fall down. And with a loud voice said, 
What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of, the, of God, most high? Excuse me. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit. Ah, do you see the tie-in? What are you talking about? You see unclean spirit there? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Listen. Okay. You see unclean spirit there? What, are, what is this talking about? A man who what? A man who what? Verse 27. Had devils long time. Okay. If you, you, you know what you could do? You could take a little pen and draw a line. Connect on the side there, of course. Not in scripture itself. But you can draw a line there connecting the two. Uh, listen, pal. An unclean spirit <laughs> is a devil. Okay? There is this distinction between them. Yes, there are. But an unclean spirit is not something that proceeds from God himself. Okay? Just remember that. Okay? So let's continue. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him. Now pay attention. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he break the bands. Unexplained strength. My mother, the little frail woman that she was, number one, she had vocal inflection where her voice would go like that. Sound like one of like a Barney Greenway from Napalm Death. Don't ask. Okay? Or like Chris Barnes. Don't ask. Okay? But they were, you know, another because a, a devil was manifesting. But also, my mother, frail little woman she was, had moments of unexplained strength. Okay? And was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And again, uh, we didn't have to just go to verse uh, 27. I mean, if you look at verse 29 about definition of what an unclean spirit is, I mean, blah, 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 come on, come on. Watch out for someone who goes to a, such a petty argument trying to defend themselves. Okay? And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go into the deep. And there was unheard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. So, devil possessed man. Devil. Fell down, cried out, fell down for the Lord. Mark chapter 9. Backtracking a little bit, go to Mark chapter 9. Just two verses. Verses 20 and 21. <laughs> Here's another thing that has happened that I've seen. Similar things. And they brought him on to him. And when he saw him... Straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came on to him? And he said, Of a child. Have you ever seen a devil react in the presence of a saint? Come on, come on, how many of you? Maybe not that dramatic, but you know. When a devil out there, when you're at Walmart or something, or at Jewel, and you're standing there minding your own business looking at avocados or something, and the, the, the dude next to you is like, uh, you know? And of course, what you do is like, Am I? Oh, no, I'm good, you know? And he's clean, <laughs> you know? So we see scriptural evidence, brethren, that devils can be very reverent and even give, you know, hey, now Jesus, son of the most high God. That's coming from devils. And today, in Christianity, see, if you want to be a true Satanist, why aren't you Catholic? Why aren't you a Catholic? 
If you, if you, you people out there who want to indulge yourselves and live in, live in your flesh, then why aren't you Catholic? Don't you know that a Catholic can go ahead and get snuckered every night and then go to their Jesuit priest and, and I gave him, give me 50 bucks, 50 Hail Marys, and get out of here, you're good. That still goes on today as it did in the Dark Ages. A little bit more refined, of course. Want to see some more? Go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. This dispensation specifically. Okay. Acts chapter 8. Excuse me, excuse me. Not eight. <laughs> Acts 16. I beg your pardon. Acts 16. <laughs> yeah, not Acts 8. Acts 16. Verses 16 on to verse 18. This, what we are about to read, I have personally, and even my wife, one day we were walking back from the park. Same devil. Possessed woman. Okay. Same individual did the same thing to both me and my wife and to me the one time when I was at Jewel witnessing and talking to a homeless individual. I personally have experienced this. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. I have heard these German Catholic women preachers try to uh, say that the spirit of divination was a gift from God. They're right. Which God, though? The three-person trinity, which is Satan? Or Jesus Christ, who is God the Father? Spirit of divination. A gift from the Father. A gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Lord rebuke you. Okay? The Lord rebuke you. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, that's, that's a female, possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain through sooth saying. Okay? The same followed Paul and us and cried, a woman with the spirit of divination. A devil spirit. Well, Brad, sh shut up the Lord rebuke you. Why would you focus on that and try to justify it? Maybe because you are a devil yourself. Okay? Things that are different are not the same, yes. But a spirit of divination? You might want to go to the Old Testament when God wasn't a permanent re uh, resident in a believer. That... That's, that's what was. We're talking about today, this dispensation. Okay? You go take yourself a long walk off of a short pier. And as I have said in a couple of comments that I've re uh, responded to, please get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Please. Please. Because Satan through his church is the one who's deceiving you. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, the woman with the devil spirit, spirit of divination, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Sounds reverent, doesn't it? From a woman that has a spirit of divination. A devil spirit. I had that happen to me. My wife and I had that happen to us. But I had that happen to me while I was witnessing to a homeless man right by the jewel here in Woodstock. The lady was right there screaming about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I kind of looked at her. I did not say anything because the, the one uh, elderly guy, he, I, I think he probably died by now. I'm sorry to say that. But anyway, I was more concentrated on this, uh, witnessing and talking to this guy. And this crazy lady filled with devils, was screaming about the Lord Jesus Christ at the top of her lungs, like literally maybe about this close where the bookshelf is, that close from me. I've experienced that. Like I said, my wife and I, we were walking back from the park with Zena the dog. That don't help you at all. But we were walking back from the park, and that same crazy devil-possessed woman 
saw us both and walked in the middle of the road over there screaming about Jesus. And my wife and I were like, and I'm like, Wait, babe, that's a, that, that woman is a devil-possessed woman. Don't. And even my wife's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 18. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And notice that Paul said in the name of Jesus Christ, Verse 17, here's a woman that had a spirit of divination, a devil spirit. And she's saying, giving glory, praise unto God. Talking about the way of salvation. Want another one? How about Acts chapter 13? Acts chapter 13, verses 4 on the verse 10. Acts chapter 13, verses 4 and verse 10. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews. And they had also John their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus. Significance, which was with the deputy of the country. Hold your place there and go to Ephesians. No, 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 not Ephesians. Galatians, I get that confused. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Uh, no, it is Ephesians. <laughs> I'm sorry. I get, the, I get that confused sometimes. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Here we see a false prophet trying to influence a ruler of sorts of the people. Okay. False prophet, a Jew. He had the credentials. And false prophet, a sorcerer, bewitching the people through sorcery. Okay. Verse 7 again which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. He wanted to hear the truth. But Eliamis the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Like all these false prophets here on YouTube, on all these other platforms, try to do. Then Paul, uh, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness. Wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And what are we reading to? We are reading on to verse 10. We're going to read to verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. And thou shalt be blind. Not seeing the sun as you went, your little bale cookie, <laughs> for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeing, seeking some to lead him by the hand. Now, that's in a literal sense, of course, but think about this. Someone who Satan resists from hearing the word of the Lord, 
Okay? Not at gunpoint. A darkness goes over them. Reference Zechariah chapter 3. Look at this. Look at this. And there are many directions we can go in this, but I'm just keeping this a little z simple. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And he shewed me Joshua, the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Hmm. Brethren, what we have been what we have just briefly looked at is evidence to show us that these devils can put on a really good shoe. And it takes time, so it takes time sometimes to discern whether someone is of us or not of us. Now, there are obvious things like that cross-dressing Calvinist nitwit. And there are also other obvious ones out there that are like, <laughs> that mark the messenger, okay? But there are also those out there who can give very detailed sermons through the scriptures, but yet still be lost. And how do we counteract this? How do we counteract this? How do we go about actually discerning fruit? Well, this is a no-brainer, but 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 19. And Mark the messenger. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness, and their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Verse 19 is very important. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And then what do the devils do? It's like, well, see, if you're saved, you don't sin anymore. What do you do with Romans chapter 7? What do you do with Romans chapter 7? Hmm? Paul somehow missed the uh, sinless perfection down here on earth memo that you heretics like to throw out at people. What do you do with that? They don't really do much with that. Or what they, do they do? They revert back to, well, the Lord can come and go, come and go, and you, in other words, not rightly dividing the word of truth and trying to apply doctrine from another dispensation and make it salvific doctrine for today. Okay? And today's the 15th. My lovely brother, did you spend, did you give that one a day? Are you on that still, brother? I love you. I love you, brother. You, you doing that one a day thing? I hope so. I hope so. I love you. Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15. Just one verse. Proverbs 15. Isn't it interesting that today is the 15th? Proverbs 15, verse 28. One verse. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. A man who is even lightly in Scripture or, or sister or woman who is lightly in Scripture has better chance 
of not being fooled, or if they are, not for that long. Why? Because they search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And contrary to some Englishmen devils out there, uh, we saints are to be fruit discerners, or fruit inspectors. Only a devil doesn't want you to truly inspect fruit. And remember, too, there are all kinds of fruit. You know, when you go and get a basket of apples, okay, I've, who, who has them? Some has them, but whatever. You get a basket of apples, you got to go through, and some of them look, you know, you hold up an apple, and then it looks, wow, that looks really nice and good looking, right? Looks great. Then you squeeze it, and then it comes, all the folds in on itself and you see all the brown. But on the outside, it looks really nice. See, we are to discern them by their fruits, absolutely. And we're going to look at that, okay? But remember, sometimes, most of you, you got to get a little deeper, okay? Because you got to remember, brethren, these King James Bible-believing Christians who give you checklists. It's only superficial. It's a facade. And they can conveniently fulfill these scriptural, and they'll use scripture. They will. And, but they themselves can conveniently fulfill their own checklists that they keep adding to, adding to, adding to. Okay? And dear brother, dear sister, okay, I have met people who have, who believe all the appropriate, correct, doctrines for today, and are lost. How does that happen? We're going to address that uh, towards the end of this video. Don't worry about that. Okay? And they're lost. But yet, they believed in one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> they believed all the five correct doctrines. I'm brought, brother, I, that, I'm not that, shh, shh, I love you. I'm not doing anything potent. Don't. Don't, you're gonna, you'll see this. Don't you even think that. Okay, I love you. I'm just saying that. Okay, But because they believe like the five main doctrines, that means they're saved. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And there are these King James Bible-believing Christians out there who are preaching that to you. If they have these five things, if they believe these five things, that means they're saved. The devils also believe in tremble. Well, that's about one one God. And like, like we said at the beginning of this video, you don't think that the devils believe the factual truth of Scripture? You're crazy. They just don't accept it. It's... Second Timothy chapter 3. Very familiar, and we're going to read it again. But also, I have to, uh, uh, I have to read this to you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. So, we're called to study, all right? And the more of Scripture you know, the more you will be able to inspect and discern fruit. There are some that will come out at, at you who's, like I said, like the apple thing, that on the outside they look so perfect and even shiny. Then you pick it up and you go like that and your fingers go into it and you see all the brown, it collapses on itself. It's a facade. It's fake. Yay. Sometimes you got to get hands on. How do we do that? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly, I told you, truly furnished unto all good works. So, our standard for judging ourselves first, absolutely, absolutely, you know, when you pull the, the beam, the mote out of your own eye, examine yourself. And in examining yourself, you examine others through what standard? Scripture. And you know what? Dear brethren, only a devil doesn't want you to inspect their fruit. To inspect them. 
Now, go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 6 on to verse 10. Rome, where are you going, Brad? Romans chapter 8. Verses 6 on to verse 10. There is a way to discern between those who is and those who ain't. Like I said, sometimes it's like, dude, dude, you, 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 what, you, you say, no, no, give me a break. But then you run into these people who profess and may even truly believe the, the right, accurate doctrines. But it's like, there's something. The, the outside looks so beautiful. But then you, you hands on. And then all the gook comes out. And we sin. Saints sin. The criteria for judging what, if someone is a saint or not is not always the basis of sin. Not always. Because, brethren, brethren, I have met saints, known saints, who have done sins that would make that bloke from England blush. Okay? I have met saints who have done things as saved men that would be like... But see the chastisement. The chastisement that you and I cannot readily see, but the fruit of that chastisement, that uh, the peaceable fruit of righteousness, like I've told you, you can't always see when a brother or sister is going through chastisement. But what comes as a result of that chastisement, that we can see. And that we can inspect and discern through the scriptures. Okay? But see, Saint Sin. Dude, read Romans chapter 7 sometime. Okay? Again, this idea that saints saved people don't sin anymore is heresy nonsense, and Paul somehow missed that. Okay? All right? But Romans chapter 8, verses 6 on to verse 10. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal, fleshly. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. At the end of the day, a saint, even though the saints can be very carnal, okay? Smack yourself in the back of the head, okay? But see, someone who has the Lord within them, the Lord is going to, <laughs> it's like, you need to get in that book. We got to talk. And remember, in a saint, if it gets so bad, the Lord will let his... I knew a brother who two months before he died reverted back into a sin. And some of you know who I'm, what I'm talking about. I'm not going to get specific. But I know of a brother who two months before he died reverted back into a horrible sin. One time. Crushed him. He was sorry, more than sorry, broken and repentant. Then two months later, he died. Okay? And yes, sin is a criteria for judging people, yes. But not always, because you've got to remember saints sin. Okay? Saints can sin just as bad Unfortunately, sometimes even just as worse. I know that didn't really make it just as worse, but worse than even some lost people. Don't forget that. Okay? Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can indeed can be. And we have the mind of Christ, us saints. We have the Lord within us, okay? And if our mind is totally carnal, or we decide and we make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision, and the Lord let his hand off of us, 
and then he takes you home because you wouldn't be corrected. Okay? All right? See, a saint, a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. But a false infiltrating convert are the ones that fall away. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Like I said, saints can, can be in the flesh, as they can. But see, a saint, unless they're under heavy chastisement and the Lord's going to say, okay, you done messed around too much. You ain't listening. You ain't taking correction. Okay, heart attack. Okay, car accident. Okay, you fall out of an airplane. Okay, or a building comes crumbling down around you. Or whatever it is. A, pi a piano falls on your head. Whatever. Okay. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Capital S spirit. If so be that the capital S spirit of God dwell in you. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. Jesus Christ who is God our Father. Okay. Now, if any man have not the capital S Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Okay? And what are we reading now on to? Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the capital S Spirit is life because of righteousness. Sooner or later, sooner or later, a saint, sooner or later, in one way or another, whether you get lung cancer or lip cancer or your liver fails you or whatever, sooner or later, the saint will turn from the skin suit, the sin suit, turn from the love of themselves and turn to the Lord. While a false convert will always even going down on a sinking Titanic will just as if I to the bitter end. And I know saints who sin. I'm a saint and I sin. Okay? I know saints who are in sin. You know what they don't do? They don't justify it. They don't justify. But then again, like I said, this right here, right, right here, this is how you discern. And sometimes, brethren, takes time. Takes time. One guy who I'm, I'm referring to is like, well, it doesn't take that much time. Sometimes it does. So it's taken uh, quite a few people a couple of years to figure you out, pal. Because you're so smooth. Smooth-talking people, you know. Smooth-talking people. You, dude, you got to watch out for them. you got to watch out for them. Galatians 2, one of my favoritest uh, portions of Scripture. Galatians 2, 20 on to verse 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's because this is dead. We're dead to this. Okay? This doesn't dictate our actions all the time. But see, it does sometimes. We need to eat, right? We need rest, yes. Hey, did you check out the football game yesterday? <laughs> Saint. Hmm? Are you justifying it? I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Ah, oh, well, the Catholic. Well, I, I, you know, I do this, that, and the other thing, but I just go to my Jesuit priest. It's like, hey, blah, 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 and you're done, and go do whatever you got to do. Give me money, do these 50 Hail Marys, you're done. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 23. 
Matthew chapter 7. Come on, fingers. 15 on to 23. Now, notice now this. Okay, there are stronger places in Scripture doctrinally specific for this dispensation. Here in Matthew chapter 7 is, is a good starting place, yes, and that, you know, for instruction in righteousness. But the fact that it's talking about that it's within the context of the Sermon on the Mount, which is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, that is something that is to be kept in mind, even though this is applicable for us, Okay. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But see, there again, remember that thing I told you about the bushel of apples, okay? You can take out an apple that looks so nice, so shiny even. Then you squeeze it a little bit. You prove it a little bit. Then it caves in and the brown and the cook comes out, okay? And in this context, our Lord instills that principle on the outside at a distance behind a camera absolutely and you know to be fair to you many of you only see this okay okay and beg your pardon this that you see of me is the same one you're going to meet talk to away from this okay but how many of these Christians and these King James Bible believing Christians. You see this, but get them away from that. There's something totally else. <laughs> but, verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Well, an evil, evil fruit, think about that. You buy an apple expecting it to nourish you and it looks good but then when you squeeze it it's full of nothing but worms and brown gunk okay that's why when you well, like for example i i there's a certain atheist out there who readily admits it's like well yeah if jesus came to me the real jesus that you're you're telling me about no i don't want that <laughs> okay fine okay fine your fruit is evil, but at least you're up front about it. It's like, I don't want to be saved. I don't want that. It's like, <laughs> okay, buddy. But, you know, their fruit is evident. It's like, hey, I don't want what you're offering. But then there are those who don't want what we're offering anyway, but yet want to give you the facade that they do so they can damn you to hell. And see, like I said, it looks great on the outside. All that gunk comes out. And see, that's the fear that these infiltrating pond scum devils have. That when you see, when you hear the individual talking so beautifully, so splendidly, so civilized, but then when you squeeze the fruit, the vileness, the vomitous, putrid stench of what he truly were comes out. See, they want to keep you at a distance so you admire that. But then you get it and you squeeze it and then all the gunk comes out of it, man. Verse 19. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And something that looks beautiful on the outside, but when you get into the inside of it, it's ugly. That ain't good fruit. Yeah, sometimes got to go a little, you, you, you got to go a little deeper. Wherefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. Now, our Lord is going to address this very principle. This very principle. On the outside, they look great. But on the inside, and as we have already demonstrated, 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Twice mentioned. Got to remember that. Twice mentioned. Twice mentioned. Big part. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. You ought to know what the significance of that. But he that doeth my, the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out many devils. And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Uh, uh, Dave, what was that, that? Back in uh, Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Not the concordance, Brad. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Again, come on. Come on. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. And you can cross-reference that with 1 Corinthians chapter 3. You go find that. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Not having this seal, sealed until the day of redemption. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ departeth from iniquity. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? They look, that fruit looks so good, but then you... And then, well, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And I mentioned it, let's go there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, okay? Verse 11. Ah, uh, ah, uh, let me see. No, let's begin at verse 1 in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 1 on to verse 11. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, fleshly even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal, fleshly. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? And the thing that gets in the way of even saints every time, every time, is this right here. Flesh. For while one saith, I am, of a, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Paul and Apollos, they were ministers. What is the tie that binds the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Scriptures? Many devils come around claiming that same thing, but they're preaching another Jesus and another gospel. And i got to mention this. Several of you, several of you, okay, uh, a brother will make it to this point. Watch out for Feldick. Les Feldick. Feldick or whatever his name is. Watch out for that guy. What are you talking about, bro? Why? He, he, Les Feldick, he preach, preaches a mild form of dispensationalism. The redemption of the purchased possession. He's even labeled Rome as Mystery Babylon. But you know what he does? And this is what y'all... All you have who have asked me about this guy, you know what his problem is? Number one, he's on. He has he has his own television thing. Number one, but also he corrects the scripture with the Greek. Yes, he does. And also, all well, other translations. Ah. Now, if you're doing that to refute other the Bibles, fine. But when you're doing that to correct. Scripture. Mr. Feldick, I'm sure, uh, unfortunately, he's dead. Um, Mr. Feldick, if you were to ask him, I bet you you could get out of him, well, this, this is the best translation, but it's not perfect. If you don't have a perfect standard, which isn't yourself. See, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's with me. That's a giveaway. Okay, 
That's a giveaway. All right. If you are someone who's purporting not to believe all the correct doctrines for today, and then yet you're going to correct the scriptures, um, bye bye. Okay. You also got to remember too that there are devils out there who do not do that yet. Squeeze them. Okay. Uh, for while one, verse four, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Carnal, fleshly. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. There, there was this kid who I talked to very briefly in Australia who, uh, who did a video about um, Leonard Ravenhill. And in that video, I, I, I deleted the comment because these people are who are responding to this are crazy. I said, hey, Leonard Ravenhill had his issues, okay? And I've talked about that. And the last one, which made me, it's like, I'm, I'm deleting this comment. This one guy commented, it's like, how dare you say that Leonard Ravenhill has issues? Putting a man on a pedestal, are you? Worshiping man? Look at what some people have done to Peter Ruckman. Look at what some people have done with John MacArthur. Look what some people have done with His Holiness from Maine. Okay? Look at that. And it's like, wow, dude, worshiping a man ever, huh? Wow. Wow. And, and, and the thing with the Ruckmanites, especially these, these modern ones, not everyone, but the, especially the, the bloodthirsty, savage, modern Ruckmanites, okay? And towards the end of Ruckman's life, you can even tell in his elder salad years that he was beginning to be enamored with his own aura. Okay? He loved it. He loved it. But never mind about that. Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believe. Even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted. Apollos water. God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. That one guy who went off on me in a comment from quite a while ago, I think last year even, uh, it's like, how dare you attack Leonard Ravenhill? Number one, I wasn't attacking him. Number two, I was just saying the guy had issues. Okay? That's it. All right? The guy tiptoed on uh, sinless perfection. Okay? He was wishy-washy on internal security. Okay? He had many issues. He also was wishy-washy on uh, prophesying today. Okay, but yet personally, I think we'll see Mr. Leonard Ravenhill up there. We'll find out when we get there. Okay, but that thing again, it's like, how dare you? Why dare? Look at you. Look at you. Now, if you're going to stick up for a friend, that's a different, you know, okay, stick up for a friend. Hey, guys, guys. You think some of these people that you, I mean, hey, if you're a, fr an, a legitimate friend, brother with someone, that's different. But some of these people who will defend some of these teachers in the way they do, it's like, dude, do you think that person would do the, give you the same? No. And to you, young man from Indiana, did he give you the same in return when you stuck up for him? No, son. You were fodder. You were an expendable asset. Because he's got a ministry to defend. Got a name he's got to live up to. You poor child. You poor child. And I mean that. I mean that, man. 
So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Yes. Of the same spirit. Sons of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Saints. And every man will, shall receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus. And what we looked at in Matthew chapter 7, what foundation did... And isn't it interesting that in Matthew chapter 7, after verse 23, our Lord goes on to the same thing about a house built on sand and one built on a rock. And brethren too, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12... Verses 1 and 2. What are you doing? What am I doing? <laughs> okay. I can almost quote it to you verbatim, but rather, you know. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. A saint falls into sin, but we don't fall away. We don't want to conform ourselves to this world, or we don't want to conform ourselves, the world around ourselves by trying to skimp and justify it through Scripture. Okay? <laughs> All right? All right? And also, too, brethren, also, too, you have to remember, This is how we discern who is and who isn't, okay? And it takes time. It takes time. It does. Like I said, some people you can discern right away. I mean, some are like painfully obvious. Some it takes a little while. Some it might take <clears throat> years and years and years and years, okay? Okay? And yes, there is definitely, you got the book right there in your hands, man. But when you got someone coming around constantly giving you, well, if they do that, they're trying to hide something. They're trying to hide something. You might put, well, Brad, you were, yeah, I did, and the Lord got me out of that quite viciously. <laughs> okay, he did. Okay? All right? You got to watch out for these checklist Christians. Okay? Because remember this, dear brother. And like I said, it takes time. And, and one will argue, well, we don't have the time today. You're right. <laughs> you're right. I'll get it. You're right. But see, the devils know that. The devils know that. See, some of you underestimate the devil and his angels. Others overestimate. Okay? All right? Be careful. All right. You got to remember that these guys who are all about giving you a one, two, three, four, five, step one, step two, step three, you saved blizzard. Okay. These people who constantly give you these checklists, keep this in mind. And when you got someone like that who is constantly, constantly giving you a checklist, while well, on the outside they look beautiful, but when you squeeze them, keep this in mind. Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7, verses 8 and verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, Shew a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, Take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and he shall become a serpent. 
Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and it became a servant, serpent. Oh, excuse me. And Moses and Aaron, sorry. And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh, and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh, also called the wise man and the sorcerers, now the magicians of Egypt, Egypt, synonymous for us today in instruction on righteousness for those of the world, okay? They also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod. Look at that. And they became serpents. They did the same thing. But, in that, well, but what happened? But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. The truth will always burn away the false. Okay. So here you see the magicians of Egypt doing something that Aaron and Moses did. Oh, cast his rod down, what not. Yeah. Mm. Also, while in Exodus chapter 7, verse 19 on to verse 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded, and he lifted up his rod, and he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants, and all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank, and the Egyptians could not drink of the river, could not drink of the water of the river. And there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Oh, we can go into so many different directions with that. But let's stay on course. Verse 22. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. They did the same thing, turning water into blood. That Chris Angel magician guy and several of these guys have taken water and turned it into wine or turned it into blood. There's that one Asian guy who took had something in his hand and pulled out the steaming piece. Oh, the magicians, that would be, that's a good video for this uh, magic. Sorry, but he pulled out this, uh, this big thing of bread that was steaming hot. A magician of Egypt. There are those out there, brethren, who believe the same things that you and I do, profess it, and may even believe it, but they're lost. And like we said at the beginning of this video, brother, sister, do you think that they don't, devils don't believe the truth of Scripture? They do. Do they accede onto it? No, because Satan, I will be like the Most High. And those that follow after Lucifer, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. So, these guys, these checklist Christians, especially, okay, Oh, they'll give well if he says it, then he's a brother. Then he Yeah. Yeah. But you see, I've squeezed that one before. Yeah. And nothing but filth came out. 
Exodus chapter 8, verses 5 on verse 7. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. Oh, give me some frogs. It's been a long time since I've had frog, frog legs. And, you know, and the French would be like, Ah, the frog legs, man! <laughs> or, the, or those down in Louisiana with their frog legs. It's like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. Verse 7. And the magicians did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the, the land of Egypt. Lord, Lord! Now, three things that these magicians were able to do. Okay? Serpent, blood, and frog, and frog legs. Okay? Now, Three things. Have you noticed? Did you notice something there, brother, sister? Did you notice this? Go to Matthew chapter 7 again. Okay. Look at verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name the serpent, the, the, the rod into a serpent? Okay. And in thy name cast out devils, the water to blood. And in thy name done many wonderful works, the frog legs. Did you notice that before? Well, in Exodus chapter 8, look at verses 16 on to verse 19 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, look at verse 16. Dust in and of itself is not mites or lice in and of itself. Dust is dirt, okay, in and of itself. Yes, there are dust mites that are so microscopic. Yes, they are. But pay, look at the verse. Dust in it. We're dust. We're dirt. And what did God do? We, your body, dear saint, is made of what? From dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. God brought our bodies out of dust, dirt. God took something that wasn't living and made it living. Okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. A lot of people skip that, skip the significance of verse 16. Dirt turns into something living. You go from something dead to something alive. Ooh, doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, you must be born again. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You go to the Lord His way, the way of the cross, broken, contrite, and in fear of Him, call upon His name, and He save you. You go from death to life, taking something that is dead and bringing it to life. Many people just kind of, you'll read that verse, it's, it's a great verse of Scripture, but they don't dig, muse upon the significance of that. Well, Brad, what's it? Keep reading. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth. And it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. 
So God took something dust and turned it into lice. Something that was dead is, came alive. Now, 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice. The magicians that had those three things going for them. But when it came to bringing something from death, to life, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. And it's interesting historically, um, it Egyptians uh, were you know wore wigs and a lot of them were bald, right? Why was that? Oh, because of the plague that never went away. Okay? Show me here where the plague of lice went away. And the magicians of Egypt who didn't have the capability. Only God has the capability of bringing from something something that is dead to life. But the magicians were able to do the what? The, 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 the rods and the serpent, the water, the blood, and bring up frog legs. But see, see dear brother, one of these Christians who keep giving you checklists, they can do this, they can do this, they can this but when it comes to giving you something that takes you from death to life uh -uh. and even they then the magician said unto Pharaoh this is the finger of God and Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said first Timothy we're, we're almost done 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 24 on to verse 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand. <laughs> you know, look at Mark the messenger. Who himself is, is falling into the Jesus Christ is common the flesh thing. Guy's lost. Obviously. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. Some, you know, some you don't even have to squeeze. You're just like, <laughs> dude, come on. Come on. But some of them, like I said, to keep you at a distance. Like, wow, that looks like, let me get, oh, they don't want me to get close. Oh, they don't want me to be a fruit inspector. Why? Because if you grab hold of the apple and give it a little, and you're like, oh! Ah! Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand. They that are otherwise cannot be hid. Takes time. Time that we do not have, brethren. Yes, you're right. But do, do remember, brother, sister, please. Just because someone purports to believe or actually may believe the important doctrines that are for us today is not, is not a guaranteed that they are one of us. It takes time. It takes time. Time we don't have. You're right. But it does. And see, the devil knows that very well. That time is, oh, isn't that a, one of his catchphrases? Time is running out. And it is. And because time is running out, it's like, here, here's something quick, quick, quick. 
And all the while, while you're looking at this quick little thing, they parade right past you and come in and wreak havoc on you. All the while smiling at you. How could someone, though, how could someone who reads the scriptures daily. How can someone read the scriptures and still be lost? How is that possible? Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 7. See, it's not a force. It's never a force, okay? It's never a force. Gotta write that one down. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Stop. Have you thought, think about the psyche of someone who lives by a checklist of the pride that swells up within them. Well, I, I fulfill this, 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 this. Oh, kind of like you've been to confession. You've been confirmed. You ate the cookie. You drank the wine, huh? Lovers of their own selves. I read the scriptures every day, but yet your life is around you. Not the will of the Lord. I, I know, it, it boggles the mind, doesn't it, brother? How can someone be in these scriptures daily and still not be saved? For men shall be lovers of their own selves. It's a religious duty. It's a thing of a checklist. Well, I read the scriptures. But then you go around throughout your day living to yourself and fulfilling the lusts of the flesh. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Think about that in context to someone who, who lives by a checklist. Okay, this, 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 and I'm saved. And, oh, F you, I'm going to go watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. F you, I'm going to go watch a movie. Okay. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. Well, I meet all the criteria. I'm a brother. You are because you say you are, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I, hey, I can, I can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. There, now you got to believe me. Well, I go amongst people and sow discord, hatred, violence, dissimulation, and curse and do whatever and attack people. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I meet the, the checklist. I fulfill the checklist. Yeah. Yeah. Having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof. From such turn away. For this sort. For of this sort. Are they which creep in the houses. And lead captive silly women. Laden with sins. Led away with divers lusts. Oh just believe and receive. God's not mad at you. God loves you. 
One of the most despicable lies in history. God loves you. But yet you deny Christ. But God loves you. It's a lie. Verse 7. Ever learning. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they are lovers of their own selves and lovers of pleasures. Look at how lovers in that context, where lovers appears in that context. Lovers of their own self, selves, lovers of pleasures. That is going to be it for this little video. It takes time, brethren. It, it, it does. I, I, we've made, there have been several videos made on this topic before, and Lord willing, I'll put them in the description box because I'll find them. But, um, brethren, remember, just because someone purports to believe as you and I do, and even may, at a distance on the outside, even appear to be like that. Doesn't mean that they are one of us. Don't forget that. I have seen one too many individual, one too many. Who on the outside, they look beautiful, but on the inside, when you squeeze them, all the gunk comes out of it. Please keep this in mind. Please keep this in mind. That's why I, I, I personally enjoy, I, I mean, I do it. <laughs> it's when brethren, you know, come to me, it's like, hey, hey Brad, let's, let's talk about this. Let's talk about it, you know. And like I've said, you know, you know, <laughs> I make mistakes. I make mistakes. You can see my mistakes too, by the way. I don't hide from them. If I'm wrong, Show me. If I'm wrong, show me. Show me. <laughs> you know, I'm not fixed to something that I think. Show me. Show me. Show me. Here. Okay? But then again, you get a devil who uses this. Who are ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because they're lovers of their own selves and lovers of pleasures. Be careful, brethren. When you got a question about someone, sit back. Sit back and watch and see what happens. Because you know what happens? You know what happens? Every single devil Sooner or later, they will shoot themselves in the foot. Like being on a live stream, still pretending to be amongst the body of Christ, and then when a Canadian comes in, you automatically switch sides, and everybody sees you and you're fingered out. And sadly, that live stream is no longer available. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that. See, that's another thing. Devils don't want you people to remember certain things. But yet, they'll go back on you and try to bring up dirt on you. But when it comes to things about them, oh, they're a little, they go cry to their mother Rome. So, but I'm, never mind. Thank you for watching this if you do. Love you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Um, again, Sorry about the uh, the Bread of Life podcast thing. I'm sorry that uh, did not come about, but it, it wasn't the Lord's will yesterday. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't. So anyway, I'm going to get this video uploaded. Uh, and also, too, here in Illinois and also like in the North Dakota, Canada, and stuff like that, well, right here in Illinois, we got an incredible cold streak going on. 
So uh, please keep in your prayers those who are without. Okay, please. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, brother, sister, if you have an opportunity to help someone who's out in this cold, may the Lord lead you and guide you. Anyway, that's it. Have a go. I love you.